Hi, welcome to the Hawkeye webinar part one. This will be the first part. We'll be talking about the spray evolution, where all the spraying has started and where it is now, spray patterns and droplet size, and then the Hawkeye features and overall just what Hawkeye can do for you as a whole. The evolution of spraying. We all started out with a speed-based control system. This is where you set the pump or flow at a constant speed or at a constant rate and you control the vehicle speed to achieve a proper gallon per acre rate. This system was great. Uh, it was simple. The worst part about it was any speed changes, whether you speed up or slow down, cause inaccurate application rate. Then we moved on to a flow control based system. This would be your SCS 440s, SCS 450s, and so on. This system did a great job at controlling rate. It was very accurate. The issue with this system was anytime you speed up, it's going to control the pump to increase, and that's going to increase your pressure, affecting droplet size. From then, we moved on to a flow base and pressure control system. This is where we control the pump to achieve a particular pressure that we want to, and then we control the nozzles on the boom to control your rate to your desired uh, gallon per acre that you need for your chemical. This system is great. It gives you a wide speed range and a constant spray pattern no matter how fast you're going. Why is spray pattern important? What we need to do is we need to reduce drift and optimize the droplet size according to what the chemical recommendations are. This will increase yields and overall make your system a lot more productive. We need to achieve that balance between a very fine and very coarse droplet. The fine droplets are great. As you'll see in some next slides, we'll get good coverage over whatever we're spraying. Now the very coarse droplets, that's going to reduce the wind drift and get those droplets to where they need to be. As you notice in that last slide there, we talked about the very coarse and very fine droplets. Now we need a way to measure that and spray microns is how we do that. We need to measure how wide that droplet size is and both speed and your flow rate will change the micron size overall in the system. So what is a micron? A micron is a measurement of length that is equal to one twenty-five thousandths of an inch and the sprayer droplets are measured in those microns. For example, the diameter of a human hair is roughly 100 microns. And where do those microns, how do they fit when you're actually spraying your chemical? How do they fit on a leaf? Um, on the left there, you see 500 microns. It's a very, very coarse droplet, and that's, that's going to be one drop. Uh, we take that in half. We go 250 microns in the center there. We get eight times the droplets. We cut that in half one more time, and we get 64 droplets at 125 microns each on the right. So you can see how that the change in micron size, just taking it by half, drastically increases the number of droplets overall in the system. This is just a chart that explains a little bit about droplet size, the micron assignment to that, and the overall drift that's associated with that. So in this example, we have eight mile an hour wind speed, relative humidity of 75%. It's 75 degrees outside and our spray was at 30 PSI. So at the top there, the extremely coarse uh, droplet size is 600 microns. And you see that drifted very, very little, 0.2 feet. So that's very good for drift control. On the contrast, at the bottom, the ultra fine droplets at 50 microns that's those driftable fines. That's what's going to drift and get the neighbor's crop and damage areas of the field that's not supposed to be. So that drifted roughly 45 feet. And all of these examples uh, were with a droplet that was falling three feet to the ground. These are some examples that we did. Uh, we did some spray tests. And on the left side is your check. And on the right side was a medium spray. As you can see on this example, it did a very good job in coverage. There's not much that didn't get hit. There's very little green uh, coming back and coming back for the regrowth there. On the left side, again, we have that medium spray compared to a coarse spray on the right. 
as you can see, that coarse spray didn't cover this area as well, and you have a lot more areas of green, a lot more regrowth that's coming back. On the extreme, on the right side, that very coarse spray, as you can see, all those droplets either bounced off the leaf or hit directly to the ground. And compared to the left side on a medium spray, it doesn't even look like there's any chemical application done here. As we talked a little bit about that in the previous slides, there are limits to a flow-based system. And one of those is your constant pressure. We need to keep consistent speed and flow to keep a consistent pressure. For example, 10 gallon per acre rate is our target rate. And to keep that, we need to keep a consistent, let's say 12 miles per hour. Any speed increase or slowing down, that will directly affect the flow rate which will affect our pressure. And those nozzles that we have on there, the standard nozzle tips, allow for a little fluctuation, but not as much speed range as we could get when we have pulsing nozzles in the system. When we add those pulsing nozzles, we drastically increase the speed range and keep that consistent pressure throughout. There's no more speeding up or slowing down that actually affects the target rate and the pressure that we're applying at. So the ultimate spraying goals, what do we need out of a spray system? We need precise application rates. We need consistent coverage, no matter if we're speeding up or slowing down. We need a wide speed range. And we need the ability to manage drift and target rates in certain areas of the field. And we also need the ability to manage drift and off-target applications. We need to minimize those over and under application areas that could cause harm to particular areas of the field. The importance of precise application. Ineffective spray application will allow insects or disease to damage crops. Wrong application rates can stress or damage crops. And spray drift in adjacent fields or unintended application can damage crops as well. Proper application ensures chemical costs are minimized with no need for respray. So where does Hawkeye fit in? Hawkeye can provide accurate application with a consistent spray pattern and droplet size at every nozzle while reducing spray drift. Along with that, you get a simple installation and easy setup and calibration. So how does Hawkeye work? Hawkeye is a pulse width modulated system. So this gives us the ability to control in other ways where we couldn't in the past. We can decrease the pulse width modulation to 50% that example on the top. So we have an 08 size tip at 10 gallons per acre. We decrease that to 50% duty cycles. So all that area shaded in red, that you can consider your actual gallon per acre rate at 10. Uh, the middle example there, we need, let's say we're slowing down for a turn or for whatever reason, we decrease that duty cycle to 25%. So essentially that 08 tip at 25%, is an O2. We're still keeping that consistent pressure throughout, our gallon per acre rate staying the same, and no change is needed by the operator. At the bottom, that would be a 75% duty cycle, so we're speeding back up again, and that essentially makes an 08 tip the size of an 06. We can control to 100%, so your 08 tip is going to be a true 08 size. On this screen here, you can see the water sensitive paper, a few examples on the top of a flow and pressure based system. The whole top row is at 10 gallons per acre and 40 PSI, but there is a changing, increasing speed range from left to right. At the left, you see that three miles an hour, next is five, then nine, and on the right is 11 and a half miles per hour. You can see that there's a consistent droplet count throughout the whole speed range there. On contrast, the bottom row is at the same 10 gallon per acre rate at increasing mile per hour. It is a flow based system, so as we're going from 5 miles an hour on the left, 12 miles an hour on the middle, and 18 miles an hour on the right, you see that the pressure also increased from 10 to 40 and then all the way up to 90. What that does is increases the droplet count considerably. You see on the left, the droplet size is fairly large and there's not as many droplets as the top row. The bottom is your 10 gallon per acre rate, 12 miles an hour and 40 PSI. 
So there's a very similar uh, droplet count from the bottom center on to the top row. And then the right side, you can see that uh, the total number of droplets is extremely large. You can't even count them on that. Some key features of Hawkeye. Hawkeye is integrated in the sprayer design. We have over 100 kits to fit several OEM models of machines, self-propelled sprayers, and they're tailored to those machines. So it's not a one-size-fits-all scenario. We have a single integrated isobus display, and that's key. There's one display controlling rate and pressure. Doing your mapping, the whole system is all integrated into one. It's more robust cabling and routing. The cabling that we have is designed to daisy chain from the inside of the boom to the outside. There are no additional modules that are needed on the machine. Another benefit here is simple calibration and setup. There's a simple wizard that you go through on screen that walks you through step by step on what's needed. You provide it the information of what's particular to your machine and it does all the calculations for you. The whole system is a CAN bus communication to each nozzle. So that's tying up into that more robust cabling and routing. Each system communicates to one another and then back up to the main uh, master module. More features of Hawkeye. There are 16 virtual sections that are standard no matter what system you get. Individual nozzle control is an upgrade and you need the Viper 4 or Viper 4 Plus to do that. But it's a simple unlock. All you need is a purchased unlock code. All the hardware is there. You type it in and you're ready to go. Nozzle by nozzle turn compensation standard as well. That is where we decrease the nozzle duty cycle on the inner nozzles when you're turning and increase them on the outside, providing consistent flow rate across the boom. And we'll talk about that in a bit. There's a mobile app for remote testing. Anytime you're doing a nozzle check or spray test, uh, you can get your phone out and do that quickly through that mobile app. You can increase the application at the wheel tracks or fence rows. There's the ability to increase two nozzles up to 30% each. In the last there, there are five modes of operation, and we'll get into that in a bit here. This is an overall layout of how the Hawkeye system is set up as far as cabling and components. You see there at the bottom, there's a nozzle bus. All of those green indicators there are your nozzles daisy chained along that one common cable controlled by that master node. All the inputs there on the left side for your flow meter, pressure transducer, boom sense, they go to your master module as well. And then the master module connects and communicates up to the virtual terminal that we have in the cab. The Viper 4 and the Viper 4 Plus, a few things that this will give you when paired with your Hawkeye system, you have nozzle by nozzle available with this system. Like I said, it's an upgrade. It's a purchase unlock code that you can get from your Raven dealer. Now there is a catch the Viper 4 version does need to be at 2.3 or higher. It's a simple software update if you're not there. It can be done by the operator at any time. One other side note, there is a sectional control unlock that would be needed in the Viper 4 to be able to use Hawkeye. And that just shuts off your boom sections like traditional AccuBoom would. A few more features of the Hawkeye system. We have two presets for your pressure control. This allows the operator to Set your first pressure, and this could be your target pressure for a majority of the field. And also a secondary pressure can be set. And this could be decreased from your primary setting for some drift sensitive areas or actually increased if you wanted to have that set a little bit higher. Both presets can be easily adjusted from the screen. And you do have the flexibility to have a pressure bump as well. So you're not locked in to just those two pressure settings you can increase them incrementally by one or two PSI if desired. Turn compensation, like I said, this is a base feature here. It increases the duty cycle of the outer nozzles as we're turning and decreases the duty cycle of the inner nozzles down to that minimum and creates an overall consistency throughout the boom. As you see on the left there, that would be a system without turn compensation where the outer boom nozzles are under applying. You see there on that water sensitive paper, there are very few droplets 
And what's happening is all that rate is being applied to the inside of the boom where it's not necessarily needed. With turn compensation, you see on the right picture there, on that water-sensitive paper, both sides of the boom, both inner and outer, keep a consistent droplet size and pattern throughout. And here we'll take a look at a video showing you exactly what happens on a machine as you're spraying. As you can see here on the machine, the left, the inner nozzles, the duty cycle on those are decreasing significantly and actually applying that duty cycle to the outer nozzles. Those outer nozzles you'll see coming up here, they're almost at 100%, whereas the inside nozzles on the left are to the point where they're hitting that minimum nozzle duty cycle at about 25%. As we talked a little bit before here, we have one display controlling the whole system, and that makes mapping and generation, mapping and report generation, a lot easier in the system. Traditionally, when we had nozzle based systems, we had one monitor controlling rate, one monitor controlling pressure. Both systems had to have the same spray zones, no spray zones, field boundaries, etc. Whereas this system, you have one spray zone, one field boundary. You integrate that into the one monitor and the system works as designed. There's no more need to create duplicate spray zones, which makes things a whole lot easier and a whole lot consistent. Hawkeye modes of operation. With Hawkeye, we have five standard modes. We have bypassed, standard, VP, and then on the next slide, we have high flow and on off. The bypass mode here, as you see, is where we don't control the nozzles, we have a secondary nozzle tip on the system and Hawkeye is shut off and we're applying just a generic flow-based system through that secondary nozzle. The standard mode is your normal mode of Hawkeye operation. This is where we pulse the nozzles and control pressure accordingly. And this allows the user to set your two target pressures, your two target flow rates, and it controls to what the operator set it to. VP mode, that is a little bit different in the fact that we still pulse the nozzles, but instead of targeting a pressure, as in standard, we target a nozzle duty cycle. And this gives us the ability to increase that speed range, increase that flow rate, and overall put out more product. This would be designed for, let's say, a fertilizer application. Additional modes here, the high flow mode. This is where Hawkeye will be used in conjunction with that second tip. So we allow the system, you can program your primary nozzle tip size and a secondary nozzle tip size. And we pulse the one nozzle. The second nozzle is just your traditional nozzle. The last mode here is on off. This is where we control the nozzle duty cycle to 100%. The system will be either 100% on or 100% off. The benefit of this system is it allows you for a high application rates because we don't control based on pressure, but you still have that individual nozzle on off for section control. As you see on the next slide here, there are some downsides to using any one of these modes. Uh, there are some features and benefits on the left side there. You see flow control, pressure control, turn compensation, individual nozzle control, virtual sections, and wheel tracks. And then your five modes at the top, your standard VP, high flow, on off, and bypass. In some of these modes, like I said, we don't actually control the duty cycle of the nozzles. So as you can see, some of those do not have pressure control or turn compensation, both need the nozzles pulsing to have those features given to us. So you can take a look here. Standard on the left, like I said, that is Hawkeye as normal Hawkeye operation. So you get all of those features included in standard mode. So we talked about all the simplified cabling, wiring, but if there is still some anxiety about all of this electronics and wiring, there's no need to worry. Uh, we have the DTC list or the diagnostic troubleshooting codes, and that's on that little bell in the center of your screen. And this will keep you alarmed at any time. It, it keeps check on the system and tells you 
is everything functioning fine? Do we have a caution state where something is wrong, but it's not a huge deal, nothing to worry about? Or do we have a critical shutdown alarm where we need to stop the system and check things out? And that'll keep you up to date on the center of your screen. In conjunction with those diagnostic troubleshooting codes, we have the NCV or nozzle control valve diagnostic lights. And what those do, they will tell you, is the system ready or, or is there a shutdown alarm or is the system not calibrated? And as you see on the chart here, there's a lot of different combinations as far as different colors, whether they're flashing or alternating, that will tell you what's going on at any time in the system. One more feature here, as we mentioned, uh, we have the mobile phone app. And what this does, it allows the operator to check the overall functionality of the system, whether it's just a visual check or a spray check uh, from outside the cab. And this can be done on a phone, a tablet, an iPod, etc. And basically any device that is Bluetooth low energy capable. A few other ISO options. We have full compatibility with the Psychic Pro ICD direct injection system. So if you don't want to tank mix any chemicals, you can use this injection pump to inject at any point in the machine. Uh, there are also other systems as far as ISO Autoboom that we can incorporate and want, run through one single monitor in the cab. Psychic Pro ICD, this stands for ISO compliant device. That just means it's a different form of communication that the Psychic Pro uses to communicate with the rest of the Hawkeye system. A short overview of how it works, you have your carrier going through your flow meter and control valve. That meets the injection point check valve. It goes through an inline mixture and then out to the spray booms. This easily integrates into the rest of the Hawkeye system. As you see there on your main screen, right to the left of your tank, there's your product one and product two. Your carrier products, always product one, and your injection products are going to be products two, three, four, up to five products on some machines. And this allows the operator to easily change your injection rate as well as any rates or pressures with your main carrier easily from one screen. There, again, are several diagnostic tools that we can use to diagnose any issues that may come up. Product control setup, you have your tank capacity all the way down to rinse assist that we have available on that center picture. And then several alarm settings. You can have pop-up alarms all the way to a low tank limit alarm that you can set through your ISO Psychic Pro ICD pump.